Week six, wide receiver rankings for your shitty fantasy football <laughs> teams. All right, we've got the top 40 of them. Half PPR. We've got their rankings. We are going to debate the biggest gaps. And I will say, <coughs> we're going to apologize up front if there's a little bit of a lack of enthusiasm because we filmed this entire episode already, but our audio completely cut out. So this is round two for them. So if you see a little bit of an acting job going on here, it's because it's hard to it's hard to argue about fucking Dontavian Wicks for the second time in an hour yeah. period, you know? Yeah. So a little bit deflated, but Rusty. nonetheless, we'll start. We're going to go 12 out of piece, all right? Starting with the top 12 receivers. we got CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amara St. Brown, Malik Neighbors. Assuming he plays, A.J. Brown back in the lineup. Thank God. Jaden Reed up there at 6. Drake London at 7. DK at 8. DJ Moore at 9. Brandon Ayuk at 10. Chris Godwin at 11. Zay Flowers at 12. So that's the top 12. And then we got Mike Evans right outside there. So we've got the two Tampa Bay wide receivers uh, just bordering on, like, the wide receiver 1-2 kind of line there and they got the matchup against New Orleans obviously Mike Evans who goes against Lattimore and that is typically giving him some problems on the outside there so you guys both have Godwin ranked above Lattimore is there anything really to add to that situation outside of like Lattimore has historically given Evans problems therefore we probably assume most of the targets are going to go to Godwin yeah I mean I think for me it's it is just exactly that Godwin's going to have to step up It's going to be a tough day for Mike Evans. Not to say that he can't get it done, but it's just going to be tougher than it has in weeks past. And when you look at the last couple of weeks, the guys who have the big weeks, and I know it sounds very, very obvious, but the first two weeks of the season when uh, Godwin is scoring the touchdowns, he's the one who's having the really big finish. When Evans is scoring the touchdowns the last two weeks, he's having the big finish. So crazy how that works. Yeah, it's crazy how that's like a big part of production. But when you're trying to look at guys who are going to score the touchdowns in this offense, yes, they're both lottery tickets, but I'll take the guy who's not being shadowed by Marshawn Lattimore. Fair. I will say uh, the thing about it is in general, one, we have not seen both of these guys have bad weeks. And we actually have seen some weeks where they both have played well. So for me, I'm not willing to put either one of them outside of really the top like 12, like safely, just because it's also really hard to pencil in which one is going to have the good week. I know that it is like, Lattimore, but you tell me that Evans last week I don't see Evans scoring two touchdowns. He did. Right. I, at this point, I'm just I'm looking at it like I have to play both of these guys. They're almost must starts for me in fantasy football. It's like at worst you're getting one good game, like one yeah. top fifteen finish for sure. And I think it's like this this offense has become really condensed because they don't have a wide receiver three, they don't have a tight end, like everything just goes to them too. And I also will say last week, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Baker only throws for he throws for under two hundred yards and we have Mike Evans actually booming still. So like yeah. I this is an offense I'm just not willing to say that Mike Evans is someone that I want to sit this week. Right. And I mean, honestly, with the ranking of 18, you're not sitting Mike Evans. Like, you're still playing him there. It's just when it comes down to guys like Stephon Diggs with no Nico Collins in the lineup, Marvin Harrison Jr. in a good matchup with Green Bay. Like, I think I just lean those guys a tiny bit over Mike Evans in this matchup. Yep. And and moving down to that Houston receiver group, we have Nico Collins obviously officially placed on the IR. So we got to start thinking about, like, long-term replacements here. Diggs, y'all got up at 15 Tank Dell all the way down, you know, below a a lot of players because your uh, updates were not made prior to uh, the Nico Collins, you know, out uh, ruling. Correct. And I've, I've like, changed my ranking now of Tank Dell into 32. So when you put 32 to 26, he's probably in the 28 range for us now. Yeah, I I think that's probably correct. He's obviously, like, you know, missed out on a bunch of big plays, et cetera. But you still want to attach him to the Texans offense and the Texans – Get the play against New England where I'd imagine if Christian Gonzalez is going to shadow somebody. I don't know if this is the matchup where you shadow someone. Like, if you don't have an elite alpha. Like, if Nico's playing, it's obviously Gonzalez versus Nico. It's a sick matchup. But Diggs, I, I think, kind of leans more favor in in if we're going to choose someone to get shadowed in that matchup rather than Tank, who really hasn't done it. I don't think he's the type of player to get shadowed by an opposing team. So, I'd imagine that opens up some, uh, some leeway there for him. I will just kind of throw this in at the end. Like, Xavier Hutchinson. Right, he's a big dude, six three, two ten. Like maybe he takes a Nico role. Do you have any interest in, in throwing him in like a flex spot? Because uh, we saw Noah Brown last year have massive fucking games, and obviously the there was no dig, so the target tree was a little more right. condensed there. So maybe that's adding another like layer of protection. But I, if I'm really really desperate, maybe. But I can't imagine I'm really throwing him in with confidence this week. I really do expect it to kind of go digs, and then second and third options probably Dalton Schultz and Tank Dell this week. 
I think that's what I was going to say is uh, he, he wouldn't be someone I'm putting in my lineup, but if you tell me you have room on the bench and you want to add him cautiously and be like, okay, the usage this week now See is warranting putting him in the lineup, that would be something I'd be willing to do. The, the addition, obviously, of Diggs uh, this year makes it a lot different for me. Yeah. It's time for Dell to step up, that's for sure. It is. I, I would actually feel super comfortable with him as, as a flex play for me. He's one of those dudes, like, during bye weeks, you know, you're a lot of times you're filling in with, with guys like, uh, you know, whatever it is, like the Trey Tucker or like Pop Douglas. So you're like, oh, they'll have like a decent floor. I'm, I'm trying to have dudes where you're not depending on them for anything really to win. But like Tank Dell, if he goes out, goes five for, you know, a buck 40 and a touchdown, you're not surprised. And that also probably puts you over the top to win your matchup. Yeah. I, I 100% agree. I, I do have a question though on the flip side. And that is, I think, what no one wants to talk about. But what if Tank Dell, after this smash type of a situation, doesn't. is having another down week. Mm. Where do you put Tank Dell going into next week? Yeah, I mean, at that point, you're concerned, for sure. At that point, yeah. he's starting to flirt with, like, almost where we actually have him <laughs> consensus-wise now with your 50 ranking. Probably, yeah, he's probably, like, borderline bottom wide receiver three, maybe unstartable. And what What's the upcoming matchups for Houston? Just curious, does anybody know? I do not. I don't know what um, the next week's matchup is now. Okay, next week is Green Bay. So that's actually a better matchup for Tank. And then he has the Indianapolis Colts after that, and then mm. the Jets. So actually, after this New England matchup, he's got two pretty good matchups upcoming with Green Bay and Indianapolis. Yeah, sure. I, I feel relatively good about um, Dell for this weekend and going forward because of the Nico injury. But if that didn't happen, I don't know how I'd be feeling about it. Sure. Uh, let's keep moving down. We got Garrett Wilson, Debo Samuel at 17, Chris Olave at 18. Now, Chris Olave is likely going to be playing with Spencer Rattler, which yeah. – Gives me pause, right? Like he's Spencer Rattler's a fun dude to talk about. Obviously, like highly recruited out of high school, had a if uh, up and down college career. A lot of excitement for people that watch football intensely. So they're gonna assume that there's upside there with Rattler, and I think there is. I think he'll bring more of like a gunslinging mentality to this team, and he could put up like kind of like reckless throw the ball down the field, abandon numbers. But that also I think comes with a pretty high risk for the receivers and the weapons. You don't know who he has chemistry with. You don't know who he's going to be throwing the ball to. Those deep shots maybe go to Rashid. Like, do the Saints start to factor in, like, Taysom in the red zone in the 10-yard line? So, a lot of it you guys have consensus at 18, assuming now that we know for sure it's probably going to be Rattler. Uh, yeah, well, he's my, moved down. my 16 was before Carr was ruled out. Okay. So, I probably would pull him now down to probably right about where Adam has him at 20, 22 range. That's probably where I would pull him. Uh, but I, I do think Rattler is going to be definitely better than what Jake Hayner would be. He's going to play a little bit, like you said, more aggressive, and he's probably going to look downfield a little bit more. Hayner just feels like it's not. there's no upside in the offense with that. It at least gives me hope for Alave that it's going to be Rattler. At least that's what we are assuming right now based off of reports. I agree. I'm happier that it's Rattler if I'm an Alave owner than it is Hayner because Hayner is a fucking cone. But no I, question. I do think that there's a real chance here that you know they might dial it in and, and kind of – Start focusing on first reads and things like that with Chris Olave. Sure. Yeah, I, I'd probably go from 20 to about 25. I'd probably put him right in that range of JMO where it's like, okay, the usage isn't necessarily all that certain with JMO. I, at this point, I don't know what I'm getting into. So I'll, I'll put Chris Olave there. I think Spencer Rattler, the upside he possesses is maybe going to be surprising to some that aren't familiar with him. But that's that said, like, I would not be surprised to see Spencer Rattler have a really bad game. And yep. now moving forward, we don't even know if he's the starter next week. Yeah, I I go back and forth. Like, I, I kind of think most likely outcome is that he ends up having, like, a decent statistical game where he's asked to throw the ball a lot and, and kind of just, like, chuck it all over the place. But I don't know how that'll look great in, like, real football terms. The one thing I do, at least uh, in his favor, if you look at, like, Justin Fields in week one, right? Justin Fields in week one, it was pretty clear to me they weren't game planning for him to be the starter. The injury at least bodes it to be where they're planning the game plan and setting it up for he's going to be the starter for the entire week this week. Yeah. That's at least in his favor, but I don't know that that's going to guarantee that he has a great performance. All right, let's keep moving now. We got Teagans at 19. Brian Thomas, I want to point out, you guys have an eight-spot difference. Now, this is the London game, which is, like, notoriously low-scoring. Defenses feel like they're always kind of all over the place, and this is also is a rookie doing that for the first time, so maybe that impacts him a little bit more. Play against Chicago. Like, their pasty is super fucking legit. Jalen Johnson is awesome. The whole secondary is elite. Shut down number one against fantasy receivers, right? Yep. So, in, in, incredibly tough matchup. Like, not to take away from BTJ, number one in rookie receiving yard on the year Malik obviously missed a game but you have him a bit higher you have him as like a rock solid wide receiver too yeah. so is this the one that you're just like he's just playing so fucking well not overthinking it he's in my lineup 100 percent. I, I have a hard time I, I've been a little bit more cautious with Brian Thomas and you can go back and look at my other rankings in weeks prior I, I'm at the point now where it's I'm not willing to really 
make any second guesses with this. Brian Thomas, to me, is proving to be a guy that is getting the target volume in three weeks now. He's getting deep targets. He's getting 85-yard touchdown last week. I'm not saying that's coming this week, but Brian Thomas, to me, is definitely a wide rec- a mid-wide receiver, too, this week. Um, the upside he possesses, plus that type of target volume, I can't deny him. And the other thing is, too, while it is the London matchup, certainly the Chicago thing is different. The- Jalen Johnson's been great. We did just see Garrett Wilson come out of a slump in London. So I'm not going to act like it's impossible for yeah. a guy to have a good game in True. London either. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's it fair. helps when you get 22 targets or something like that. Brian Thomas is getting nine. For 4.7 a catch. No, no. <laughs> I mean, of course. But that, that offense, I mean, I'm just saying that offense has been broken. That offense yeah. was horrible to watch. Yeah. And they, they did put out Brian uh, Brian Thomas. He, they, you did see Garrett Wilson perform. Fair. I'm not going to act like Brian Thomas is in the smash situation, but I just can't put him outside of the top 20. Yeah, I think the one thing he does have going for him, though, is I guess like he's one of those big play receivers. So things don't have to go right. Like he could he could just break one, one, and that play. could just make your day for yeah. the entire fantasy. His, his 85-yard touchdown this week. He, he did nothing else would be a great day. Of yeah. course. But he also, like, he beat the guy for the line of scrimmage right away, and the ball was underthrown. He still scored a touchdown. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a great fucking player. I mean, look, I, I love Brian Thomas. It's just kind of everything that you've already mentioned, Nick. You know, traveling to London, tough defense, all of those things. And one other wrinkle that I, I don't – know if it's going to be happening this week or not but the return of Evan Ingram is going to be soon and it's going to be interesting to see kind of how that affects Christian Kirk how that affects you know Brian Thomas with an extra body in there that's going to take some extra targets is Gabe Davis out this week he got banged up last week I don't I haven't heard of him being out but that's not I don't think that's solidified yet the one thing though is with the Ingram thing for sure uh he the first two weeks before Ingram was out Brian Thomas's targets were four and four. So yeah. it, to me, it feels like three weeks now without Ingram in the lineup, he's solidified on the outside where Ingram is a guy getting the ball a lot in the slot in the middle of the field. But That's we'll it. see what we'll see what the splits end That's up being. That's a great call because four and four and then Ingram is out nine, nine, eight. Yeah. And and I don't I'm not even really questioning at all his role in the offense, how explosive or talented he is. For me, this is like at Chicago or, you know, in London against Chicago, against Chicago yeah. is, like, the matchup. I don't know if you can name a worse matchup on paper. No, it's actually – it's probably worse to be at London versus Chicago than at Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're both horrible. Like, I it's like pick your poison at that right. point. So, yeah. um, Brian Thomas, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about it. We'll see how it plays out, though. Would, you have, him, would you have him – where would you put him in yours if you had to uh, – He'd probably be right around that 24-25 mark. Okay. I would say he's, like – He's not a must start for me, but in most lineups you're putting him in because of the big play ability. Now, the yeah. London games are typically awful. However, it's probably a super cool experience. So if you happen to be an international audience member out there, we're going to hook you up with some discounted ticket prices, all right? Because if you go to SeatGeek, which they have tickets for every sport, I think hockey just started, basketball is on the horizon, right? So if you are a basketball fan, a hockey fan, a football fan now, you can head over to SeatGeek, use code BDGE10, That will get you 10% off any ticket on there. So no matter what sport you're a fan of, no matter what team you are a fan of, we got you covered, right? Personally, I ain't probably ever going to go to a London game out there. I think I missed my my open window when the Falcons played the Jaguars out there. I probably should have made the trip. Um, but those games are typically terrible, all right? So if you are close to a stadium, if, you got, if you're a fan of a team and you don't live far away, like this is a chance to get discounted ticket prices, pull the trigger, get your tickets, go root for you, go root for your team, all right? You got 10 weeks left, 11 weeks left a lot of, in the season. A lot of time to go get some tickets. So again, BDGE10, link down below. We'll take you right to SeatGeek, go cop some ticks. Let us know what games you're going to as well. I'm kind of curious where you guys are uh, spread out throughout the country. I'm using this code. I'm going to see my Lakers in the garden this year. Bron? Bron, Bron? Bron, Jalen Brunson. Those are going to be expensive as shit. I get 10% off, baby. That, BDGE10. That you do. Bron, Bron. You know, I want to I wanted name my dog. Uh, see, that's a, Bronny James that's a discussion for another. <laughs> for another time. Let's keep moving down. We got Terry McLaurin at 21, Deontay Johnson 22, Devonta Smith 23. Welcome back. Jameson Williams at 24, Cooper at 25, Darnell Mooney, the GOAT, 26, <laughs> Rashid Shaheed 27 as we enter Tier 3. George Pickens, man. Ah, Pickens is so good. The offense is just not allowing him to really like hit any sort of ceiling. It's also five straight games without a touchdown, yeah. which is kind of killing me. There's there's just not enough passing volume, and there's not enough yardage. In three of his last five games, Fields has failed to pass for even more than 150 yards. That's crazy. The, the thing was, I was at least – I guess I'm curious where you guys have it now too. Two weeks ago, the game before the Cowboys, Fields looked really good as a passer. I was like really kind of excited about it. And then playing the Cowboys, I mean, I expected a little bit of regression, but it was back to, you know, old school, historic low levels yeah. of passing again. Where do you guys fall in the middle of this? I right now have him ranked here because I believe that his situation can't get much worse, and I think that there's touchdowns going to be happening soon. 
At the same it's, time, I mean, it's is a great it, matchup. At Look, the same time, it's like, how long do we wait? I, yeah. I kind of, two weeks ago, after we saw that game, I would have, I mean, there's video of me out there saying that I, I felt very confident in what Justin Fields would be the starter the rest of the way. I don't know if I feel the same way two weeks later. I think he'll be the starter. I just, I, I don't know. I guess, uh, yeah, it, it, it was easy to get over your skis there. It was like his first, like, good game, I felt like, as an actual passer or, like, yeah. high volume and, like. They ah. were 3-0 and at the time. Sure. Now they're 3-2, and right? So it's like if they're dropping games and now, you know, say they lose this week. I, I think at least me personally, the way that Pittsburgh runs their team and the way that I look at it, if he is the reason they're losing the game, meaning that he's turning the ball over, I can see them switching the quarterback situation. I don't think could just because they lose the game that they would be pivoting. From could you personally. say that he's partially the reason they're losing games because they can't get the offense going? Dude, it's – I mean, like, what else is going to happen in that – like, the calls are going to be exactly the same. And I don't imagine Russ is going to, like, run the offense that better. I, with with their personnel, they have George Pickens, and they have, like, literally no one behind him. They're yeah. – like, three of their five starting offensive linemen are hurt – IR out for the year. I, I, I don't see a world where, like, things can really get that much maybe, better. Maybe I'm just – overly optimistic about a guy like Russell Wilson, but I feel like he changes the offense to go from a, you know, an offense that's throwing for 130 a week or 140 a week to an offense now that can throw for 200, 225. And if yeah. that's the case, you know, they're scoring two touchdowns instead of three field goals in a game with Justin Fields. Like it, it just feels a little bit different. And I feel like that I'm really hesitant about like Russ being a better option for them, to be honest. But I think from a picking standpoint, like I, I have pickings in your idiot league mates. He's like, He's a dude that, despite him not really producing at a high level, I don't want to sell at all. Like, I still want to keep trotting him out there because I do think better days are ahead. But I guess if I had to lean one way, I, I, I kind of am intrigued to see what his fantasy day looks like with Russell Wilson in there. If he adds a little bit more stability, if their pass attempts go up from fucking 18 to 24 a game, like, yeah, that makes well, me a lot higher. Last year when Russ was under center for the Broncos, he Sutton, had Sutton yeah. looking really good. Yeah, I agree. Sure. But it wasn't high volume, though. His targets were still really low, like – if he's not the getting the touchdown was up, though. Yeah, sure. I guess. I think the problem for me also is that just because Russell Wilson goes under center doesn't mean that Arthur Smith's not running things for the Steelers. Exactly. I think there's a I think there's just a low volume nature that this team is going to play with where it almost kind of leads to if Fields is not turning it over, that stylistically is better for them. And you're starting to see, as much as it's not good for Pickens, he was getting designed runs. That they're, they're seeming to lean into Fields as their starter. Has Hasn't Fields lost a couple of fumbles the last two weeks as well? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's playing a little bit sloppy for sure. I guess, again, it just comes back to the fact that, like, even if Russ is under center, I just don't think the offense, the style, the scheme, the play calling changes at all. Fair. Yeah, which I mean, is annoying. for fantasy, you know, Fields is the guy you'd probably rather have because he's a better quarterback play if he's the quarterback than Russ yeah. is. And the other part, I think, which is tough for Pickens is when you have an offense that's that consolidated, when you're getting no help for running backs, you don't have a single wide receiver outside of you to be good. Like, defenses don't have anything to do except for take Pickens out of the game. Did you see that small little news piece that came out about Tomlin saying that they're watching his snaps? Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, what is that? I'm not sure. They were like, we're watching his snap count to to get, like, the most productivity out of him. Well, there was footage that came out, and I don't want to put too much stock into it, but he was, like, half-assing a lot of his routes in that last game. And I don't know if maybe the watching his snaps or doing something has anything to do with that but yeah I don't it, it is weird and this kind of felt like it was always going to be part of the Pickens experience is like weird reports and the like diva. the vibes are always getting weird diva shit yeah so mm-hmm. I don't know you just got to kind of bank on talent with with Pickens and hope he's not like your wide receiver one or two because at that point you're probably in trouble Pittsburgh knows how to pick him speaking of the the diva stuff you know yeah they really do uh let's go down the board JSN, Michael Pittman, Christian Kirk, Dontavion Wicks. So I want to point out uh, both the Indianapolis room and the Green Bay room. I think these are two good discussions I have. Now, Pittman, you guys have at 30, and we have Josh Downs all the way down at 41. Now, we obviously had you know a passionate discussion about this last time we recorded. I just think Downs, regardless of who the quarterback is, if it's a rich you're pulling Michael Pittman down for sure. Mm-hmm. I don't think Downs falls that far down, to be honest with you, for me, like outside of the top 40. So I think the gap is closer for me there. If Joe Flacco's in under center, obviously we've seen the insane target share numbers for downs. I think he just elevates that passing game because he brings something over the middle of the field that like Pierce obviously doesn't have, that Adonai Mitchell's not bringing to the offense yet, that Pittman is a good possession receiver. But I think downs is like that quick twitch, like safety valve for a lot of these QBs. So if Flacco's in, like Pittman sure gets a little bit of a boost, but it's not like I'm putting him into like top 20 receiver category so I think no. he stays around where he is but Downs gets a huge boost so in my opinion like I don't think these guys should be 10 11 spots off I have Downs way closer based on what we've seen production 
opportunity utilization. Like, Downs is a dude for me that I feel, like, relatively confident regardless of which quarterback's under center putting in his wide receiver three. Yeah, I mean, I have them seven spots apart in my rankings, and, and I think that's kind of just right now with the operation of I'm going to view it as probably Anthony Richardson is going to be the quarterback this week. If he is, obviously, you know, both of these guys are pretty sketchy plays based off of what we've seen with Anthony Richardson. But uh, you're right. You know, if if Flacco is in, you're probably moving both of these guys up. Downs would come up quite a bit. Like, I, I would probably I put like him if, in. If Flacco plays and you're in a PPR league, like, dude, I feel like you got to pry Josh Downs out of your lineup. Well, that, that that's, I guess, for me why I, I've already, since we had our – other video, and I've moved Pittman down a little bit. I think you bring up some good points there. But for me, Josh Downs, and this is half PPR yeah. when I'm doing my rankings. Sure. In a half PPR league, if you're telling me Anthony Richardson's quarterback, I don't want any part of starting Josh Downs, honestly, in half PPR. Oh, I feel like really he has a, he's a very good PPR floor. If this is PPR, I'm probably putting him up another 10 spots from where he is, honestly. Yeah, no, that's fair. Half PPR definitely knocks him down uh, a little bit. A peg there, for sure. He kind of reminds me of like a more explosive Wondell Robinson, to be honest. That's fair. And, and honestly, if, it, if you're telling me it's Joe Flacco with the starting and he's playing with Josh Downs, I'm putting Josh Downs a little bit ahead of Wandale in my rankings. I like that. And I think I would agree with that as long as Malik Neighbors is um, back in the lineup. Obviously, if he's not, then Wandale probably takes sure. a nice little fat boost up there. But I want to talk about Dontavian Wiss because this was a dude who super popular pickup last week. On paper, was supposed to crush on paper, got the opportunities to crush, led the team in targets, target share, all that shit. The matchup was beautiful against the Rams. And basically the sentiment was like, start all the Packers players. Now, Jane Reed got home. Tucker Kraft got home. Josh Jacobs got home. Wicks was the guy that didn't because he just keeps dropping fucking passes. I still think, though, when you're down here, I would have him ranked high. I like. I don't want to say he's a must start because obviously we saw what his floor could be. But he's another one, like the conversation we have with Tank Dell, where... When you're in bye weeks, when you're, like, picking your flex spot or whatever, I'm not too concerned about, like, floor. I'm not too concerned about getting nine, nine, ten points there. I want dudes like Wicks who can pop off for 570, two touchdowns. Dudes who are, like, really good separators that can make the long play. Like, even going back to preseason, the one throw that, like, Jordan Love had, like, in one of the first games, it was like he came on for three for three plays. I think it was, like, two handoffs and then a 60-yard touchdown to Dontavian Wicks. Like, those are the type of upside plays that he brings – week in and week out. And that's just like the experience with these high upside players. It's like, you're going to get some bad games. He's going to make some boneheaded mistakes, but like, I still think love trusts him and we'll continue to go back to him. And like, you don't want to be having to do like wicks on your bench for a high floor player when he pops off for, you know, a hundred yards and a touchdown again. Yeah. I mean, last week wicks, he still led the team in targets. I, I think the sentiment of what you had last week where it was play all of the Packers guys, you're going to play them all again in this matchup against Arizona. Yeah. The over-under on this one is like 50 points or something like that. Like, I, it's supposed to be a very Even with Dobbs back, game. like, I'm good rolling out again. Kraft, Dobbs, yep. Reed, Wicks. Yep, yeah. I totally agree. And, and Wicks, again, both of these guys, Wicks and Dobbs, for me, are top 36 plays. I'd have them mm -hmm. in there as a flex, maybe a wide receiver three if you have three wide receivers. But that's – I'm viewing both of them pretty much the same. There, the two guys – so – if Ingram is back, I would have for sur for sure Dontavian Wicks ahead of Christian Kirk, and I would also now with uh, Rashid Jaheed not having Derek Carr for certain, have him lower. So I'll move Wicks up two spots. But once we start getting past there, right? Like especially in, we're talking in the range, I guess, with George Pickens again. We're talking in the range of JSN. I'm not so bullish on Wicks that I'm putting him certainly ahead of those guys. I think it's a very serious conversation there where there's I think there's still plenty of upside to be had with JSN. I know that the he's had low floors at times, but I think so has Wicks. I think that JSN in a grub offense still carries a ceiling. Yeah, I, I, I feel more confident that Wicks will hit his ceiling than, than JSN has. I Even like watching JSN, I, I don't feel like I've seen – what we were promised out of JSN at all. Like he's he's put together good games, good target games, but I don't I don't think there's been like the coolest play that he's had in his career was this last week when he was faking a fucking Hail Mary catch from Geno Smith. So, Geno was I mean down just to put line. it into perspective, like a lot of the dynasty community that was really hyped about JSN coming into the NFL, like there was conversations about JSN outproduced Alave. JSN outproduced Garrett those Wilson. Those will go down to some of college. the worst conversations of like, all time about yeah. him being better. Th those that's are, what I'm th saying. Like, that's kind of how some people were viewing him. And so the ceiling for him, like, we thought he was going to be a guy that could come in and yeah. some people felt like he could overtake DK Metcalf. No, not me. I, I thought that was already way too high. And I, they don't play really the same. They're not put in the same type of situations either. Like, yeah. JSN's playing a lot of slots now. I'm just saying that was some people's sure. expectation, and, and th well, he I mean, just has not hit that at Agreed. All. Like, it could like it could have ended up being a situation where JSN turns into what Chris Godwin is doing this year, and DK is Mike Evans. 
where like DK is not putting up a buck 30 and touchdown every week. He'll have games where he goes 60 for two, but then games where, you know, Godwin goes seven for 90 and a touchdown. And that's yeah. like what we wanted from JSN. It just doesn't feel like we're getting that. And maybe we still need Lockett to get out of the way. Maybe we just need to see more chemistry, like with this overall team and the scheme. And it's been four or five weeks since, you know, head coach, offensive scheme, offensive coordinator, play caller, like all a lot of new shit going on. Couple, so a couple games there with no Kenneth Walker. Like the lineup wasn't even there. I think their right. offensive line has been banged up too. Like Their line is bad. I, that feels like a problem that's going to be a thing for a minute. Yeah. The defensive line was banged up in that game uh, a couple weeks back. Like, yeah, it's just been, I don't know, a lot of moving also, parts. I mean, when we're talking about the D-line being banged up, we're like, all right. What are we that, doing? That's where the excuses for JSN need to stop. You're right. My bad. <laughs> You're like, there's a rookie D tackle that was out. That's why JSN did stop it. All right, we'll keep moving down. I love Wicks. I think you should have him in your flex again. Do not be discouraged from him. We got Calvin Ridley at 34, Dobbs at 35, D Hop at 36, Tank at 37, Romy Rome at 38, Khalil 39, Lad at 40. Right. Anyone within those last, uh, you know, five, six, eight dudes that uh, you think we should highlight? Maybe the Tennessee receivers? Yeah, I, they were interesting for me to rank because on paper the matchup is really nice for them, but I, I just don't feel super confident in either of these guys at the moment with what we've got production-wise out of Will Levis. Uh, I, I feel like right now I lean Ridley a little bit over Hopkins, but I just can't really throw any of these guys comfortably into my lineup until we really see Will Levis step up or maybe not even until Hopkins is on the team anymore. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure we ever see Will Levis truly step up and like – correct a lot of the boneheaded errors he makes I think that's just kind of who he's shown to be consistently but I think for fantasy purposes I am pretty confident in Ridley DeAndre Hopkins I have at 35 honestly because of the matchup and I'm just to be honest with you I'm starting to feel a little weary of him at 35 yeah I, I, feel, I feel good like about he's Ridley. consistently just like not actually healthy and like things just look wonky out there and it sucks too because like there are QBs or offenses that could play poorly where it's like fuck we get down by 15 points or whatever and then it goes into like garbage mode we're putting up a bunch of points it feels like that never happens with Levis and maybe it's because the defense is like too good to to need to score a bunch of points but we're not getting those you know again the Jameis Winston type games where Calvin Ridley benefits from them what I will say though I, I feel like watching Ridley he still looks explosive he still looks good I think if given the opportunity he could have big games and and D Hop rumored to be a trade, a, a trade candidate. So if he moves, maybe the targets get a little bit more condensed with Calvin Ridley. So I do think he's he's a buy low. Obviously, I'm not sending someone of the same price for a Calvin Ridley. But if someone in your league is looking to get off him and they're like, I'm just done with this Tennessee offense, I, I might swipe swoop in. Wicks or Ridley? I'd, Starting this week? Or? I'd go uh, Wicks. Overall, like just it, rest of season, first and foremost. Uh, Probably Wicks. I'd go Wicks too. Okay. I, I'm just looking at these finishes, man, with Ridley and – Aside from that week two game where he had the rushing touchdown and the other, you know, receiving touchdown, he finished as wide receiver 51 week one, wide receiver 104 in week three, and wide receiver 87 in week four Jeez. before the bye. He has six targets and two receptions in his last two games combined. That's not great. Calvin Ridley has been, if you put him into your lineup each week, he's killed you. Yeah, yep. no, that's fair. I think I think rest of the season I want Wicks. I think for this week coming out of the bye, I have play some, red over Wicks. I, I am just mm. it's very close, but I'm, I'm playing Ridley this week. I, coming out of the bye, I feel like if this is not a week where I feel like coming out of the bye, it's you got to get Ridley more involved. And if you don't, now I'm like, all right, I'm, I need to move off of Ridley completely. I hope so. I just feel like the identity of what this offense is going to need to have to succeed is a little bit more towards what we saw with them in Miami uh, before the bye when they were trying to get Tony Pollard rolling like they were trying to get him to run the football and I think a lot of their success will come from having a good ground game with Pollard and with Spears in that type yeah. of offense you know what else like there I haven't really seen any conversations about like all all summer everyone was really excited about Brian Callahan coming over and being like this is gonna be a pass heavy offense I think like the maybe something that got conflated there was when he was in Cincy since he was never a pass heavy offense they were always like run the ball heavy on they went three wide receivers right, often yeah, which right. was like the exciting part about Tennessee but they were never fast paced they were never a pass heavy offense Joe Mixon always got first and second down carries and I think like that kind of got taken out of context a little bit without actually thinking about what's getting they, taken over there they were a team that had uh they were really high in pass attempts but it wasn't a team that just wanted to pass 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 they definitely relied a ton on a guy like Joe Mixon so I that's where I think actually if they're trying to get it right, they should be featuring Tony Pollard. You should be getting Spears involved. That's, that's the it, best weapon I, they have right now. But I think that Ridley should be the clear wide receiver that they're featuring 
in the right spot. So yeah. I think that's my hope, at least, with the yeah. situation. I also think one thing that was very obviously not taken into account enough was Brian Callahan's going from Joe Burrow to Will Levis. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we just didn't know what Will Levis I think was. a lot of us felt like Will Levis could elevate, and I think there's a reason why he wasn't a first-round pick, and there's a reason why he just hasn't been that good at the, the NFL level. The reality is you have to protect Will Levis from himself. He is going to find a way to lose a game versus Chicago that you shouldn't lose by throwing an interception. In and give us the meme. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, like weekly memes. Every week. Yeah. Last week, the, the bench meme or whatever it was. Yeah. We're getting was, uh, you guys week. follow Bengal on Twitter? Yeah. You know, Bengal? Yeah. He, he like does a weekly thread now of all like the screenshots from Will Levis's game. There's one where he's like laying out, I think, to try to tackle a guy. Yeah. It's like one of the top five so I've ever seen. Somebody said that he's the first official NFL clip farmer. So he's mm-hmm. like doing this on purpose to <laughs> get goes clips. out to get good clips. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, that is the top 40. And I think we are going to uh, wrap up there. I do actually want to touch cut. on one more thing. Okay. Yeah, deep cuts we'll get into. The New England Patriots, because Drake May is now starting. Mm-hmm. And while we don't have any of the Patriots actually in our top 40, and I definitely wouldn't suggest starting them right away, um, I think that both Jalen Polk and Pop Douglas, we just filmed our waiver wire show in mm-hmm. Your Idiot League Mates, I think they're both good stashes if, if they're on the bench. Pop Douglas is my deep cut of the week. Okay. So. I think with Drake May going to the quarterback situation starting, it, I view it as Pop Douglas hopefully has more upside. I think Jacoby Brissett, while head coaching obviously was trusting him weekly, is by no other choice realizing there's no upside there. So I, I think Pop Douglas is going to be, at least for the short term, the wide receiver to own um, until we start to see Jalen Polk take over the reins. I really want to see what a, a ceiling game looks like in this Patriots offense, passing wise, because we've only seen floor games so far. But like when when Drake May eventually throws for like two sixty, two seventy, I'm really curious to see how that gets dispersed. Like someone like Pop's going to go for ninety, or Polk's going to have a big game. Like I, I'm I'm really curious to see how the distribution works out there. And if it happens in this game. Like, whoever that guy is is going to be one of the highest added waiver wire players of next week. I feel like Pop Douglas, if you have him and you're, you're needing a flex, sure, the floor doesn't really entice you all that much, but I think the ceiling could be 90 yards and a touchdown pretty easily. And in PPR, too, he's a dude that, like, he's not a guy who will go three for 90. He's a guy who will go seven for 90 yeah, or six, six for 60. Six, like, eight, ta- eight catches easily. Yeah, so the range of outcomes so for he's, him. He's, he's a really good floor play for PPR leagues. Yeah, I don't mind it. And keep in mind, too, next week – New England gets Jacksonville, who's been really good for wide receivers. So mm. could be a good week next week for them as well. Uh, my deep cut, I'm gonna get a little bit. I'm gonna get it a little bit nasty. All right, we're gonna go over Shad Bateman of the Baltimore Ravens. Now, last week for Bateman, obviously he went eight for four and a touchdown. Uh, finished as a top twenty wide receiver on the week. If you're looking for streams at the wide receiver position, there is no better matchup than the Washington Commanders. You want to target this matchup. They just are giving up a ton of points. And if you look at the over under in this game, fifty one and a half points. There's going to be a lot of scoring, a lot of passing. I think if you're looking for a big play or or a guy who can you know make good use of a bad defensive matchup, maybe Rashad Bateman, who's currently ranked in like wide receiver fifty six or something like that. Interesting. It's, yeah, it is the high over under. It's it's not a bad call. I mean, that's all I could say. It's the high over under. That's all I get at. Outside of last week, where the Browns, for the most part of the game, scored six points on Washington, their defense is to be had for sure. Yeah, agreed. And high over under games, Detroit, Dallas. The guy I'd go to is Jalen Tolbert, who had a breakout game last week, but he is clearly the wide receiver too there now, right? And this is a game where. The Detroit cornerbacks struggle right now, allowing fantasy points wide receivers. Their strength is easily their run D. Dallas is not going to be able to run against them, so they're going to have to throw the ball. And, and Detroit will probably eat up the Dallas defense, score a lot of points, and vice versa, whatever. Now, this could very easily just be a CD week where he goes, you know, fucking seven for 150 or whatever. But with Cooks out for the foreseeable future, like Jalen Tolbert's clearly the two there. Talked a lot about it during the summer. Like, there was just a lot of reports about Tolbert, like, improving as a player, getting real chemistry with uh, – with Dak Prescott, and it obviously runs through CD, Jake Ferguson, but Tolbert's like a, a solid secondary player in fantasy. I, I think last week watching, when you see a guy like Tolbert who, I think the reality is a guy like him where you're trying to, you're projecting him to get into that wide receiver two role, and you got a guy who's a veteran like Cooks, seeing him get the opportunity, fourth down game on the line to get that catch and make that catch, yeah. I think for me, it shouldn't be understated for what his fantasy upside weekly could be moving forward, where that's a ton of trust from a guy like Dak in that moment. And he made the play. I think I was kind of unsure that he was really going to take this role and be someone you wanted to see with that. Sure. 
Jalen Tolbert to me is a guy that could quickly, after this week, if he plays well again, be rising up my rankings weekly in fantasy. Back to back good weeks with Cooks out, it kind of feels like even when Cooks is back, like Tolbert probably has that job. They, Changing to the guard. They yeah. have a bye week next week, so okay. you know you only get this week's matchup, and then you have to have the bye. But I picked him up in my home league uh, when our waivers ran last night. I'm going to plug him in and play him immediately this week. Like I had Nico Collins. He's not going to be playing, so now Tolbert, it's time to step up, baby. Well, that's Hate why, see I, it. and that's why I say like if he has a good week this week, now going into the by it feels like it'd be more solidified this is his job at the wide receiver two spot yeah, exactly all right so we'll take it away there those are the deep cuts those are the top 40 wide receivers for week six of fantasy football okay you want all of our rankings you can go get them on bge.co become a big dog member you get our weekly rankings you get our waiver wire rankings you get access to our private q a sit start video on saturday all on bdg.co or by downloading the underdog app depositing 10 bucks with our code bdge and you'll get that membership both free for the rest of the season and again you got 11, 12 weeks left in the season. So if you want some tickets to your favorite game, Seat Geek, promo code BDGE10, 10% off. Go get you, go get you some tickets. Go Hi. not to the Lakers next game, a football game, please. Will you come with me? At the Garden? Yeah. Uh, depending on the ticket prices. All right. Because, like, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to pay. Oh, I thought he was, that sounded like he was buying your ticket. Oh, I mean, if that's the case, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll use the company card. <laughs> which, which company? Uh, BDG. Snapback? Yeah, dope. Okay, yeah, cool. that's counted. I love All you. All right, we're out of here. Peace. I love you.